<laughs> okay. Okay, so welcome to the second part of sorry for uh, speaking so much about the LSMs. But uh, I really want to let Daphina uh, present what she did uh, during her internship in the summer. She will not speak now about the formalization that she did in, in COC. She also formalized, by the way, the parity example that I present uh, previously, all these uh, uh, DLSMs with primes and so on. But she will present the, the, the magical composite. Um, how can I? Um, uh, it is. So, um, I start by briefly recalling the statement of the mother children program. Uh, we had uh, some children that played outside, and some of them got muddy. Uh, they cannot see uh, their own forehead, so they don't know if they are or not muddy, but they see all of the other children. And a parent comes and tells them that at least one of them is muddy, and uh, if they know their status, they should step forward. <laughs> Uh, first, I'll uh, consider an instance of the problem. I'll consider an instance of the problem with just three children, uh, all of them being muddy, and analyze how they read in order to get to know their statuses. Um, after the parents' announcement, the problem graph contains seven nodes because we've exploded the state with uh, one, 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 representing the fact that all the children uh, are. Uh, uh, thin, uh, sorry, the zero 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 state. Um, so in the first round, no one steps forward because they all see more than zero muddy children, so they cannot infer anything about their statuses. So we we can eliminate all the states uh, with one muddy child because if that would have been the case, that child would have stepped forward. In the second round, uh, uh, the same scenario repeats. Uh, no one can get to know their status. Uh, and we can eliminate this time all the states containing two muddy children. Because if that would have been the case, those two muddy children would have uh, uh, compute using the information from the first round uh, the fact that uh, they are muddy and would have stepped forward, both of them. And finally, uh, there's only um, one state remaining, um, the state, uh, the actual state of fact. So uh, we, the problem is solved. So in this uh, classical version of the problem, the game takes place in a synchronous manner. A round consists of all the end children making each announcement of their existing status. And uh, we've seen that muddy children need need three rounds uh, in order to find out their statuses, while clean ones need one more round. And it's very important to remark that uh, the invariant maintained by this uh, uh, solution is that a child at round R knows that there are more than R muddy children. Now uh, I'll move to describing our asynchronous approach to the yeah, problem. Okay, the, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, muddy children. I present the general solution. Okay, so uh, in this uh, asynchronous version, um, the difference, the main difference from the classical one is that children can perceive themselves as being in different rounds. So we decide to maintain and communicate a, a number reflecting this virtual uh, round. Um, so this is why states will be structure of these forms of this form. Um, the first component of the stir is uh, a, a list of indices uh, denoting the muddy children perceived. Then we have uh, the round and the status. 
Um, this is an example. Uh, if we have three children, one of one of you being mother and three being a possible fate of child three would be uh, this one. And uh, the second property we want to uh, we want our model to satisfy is that messages uh, should report on the epistemic status of them center at the moment the message was sent. So uh, messages will carry uh, index around them status. Um, so we encode the, each child as verified the VLSM CI. Uh, a structure of this form where uh, now the set of labels will contain uh, three elements corresponding to the three um, communication stages in the protocol. Ten messages have the form described on the previous slide. Initial messages, uh, we don't have any specific initial messages. Any message can be uh, emitted first. Uh, states are um, have one of the following two forms. Uh, either they are uh, uh, they correspond to the situation before the announcement, and in this case they contain just the observation list, um, or uh, they are so-called running states, which contain all the three components: observation list, round, and status. And of course, uh, initial states are those before the announcement. Uh, now let's take a look at how the transition function is defined. Uh, first, we have init transitions, which are done only on uh, initial states and uh, directly corresponds to the further announcement. So they result in two uh, possible states, depending on the number of muddy children seen by the component. Uh, if they see no muddy children, then the game is trivial because I can infer they are muddy, and otherwise um, the flag state uh, is uh, is set to unknown. And in both cases, uh, the round number is set to zero. Uh, the second uh, transition is emit, which simply sends a message uh, with information corresponding to the current state. And the most interesting uh, transition case is uh, receive. We analyze now uh, one of the most uh, interesting uh, receive cases, which corresponds to the situation when a child being in an unknown state, so uh, they do not know their status, receives a message from another child, say J, uh, seen as muddy by I, who doesn't know their own status neither. So let's see how I reasons in this context. Um, sorry, uh, from from the received message from J, I knows that J knows there are more than RJ Madi children, and since I sees J as Madi, I knows there are actually more than RJ plus one Madi children. Then. Depending on this inferred number, rj plus one, if this is greater than the current round number of i, i updates its round to this number. And uh, if the updated round of i is uh, less than the number of money children seen by i, I uh, the information gained is not enough to infer anything, so i has to stay in unknown state. But if this round number ever becomes equal to the number of money children, children they see, then I can uh, infer they are money. Um, these are the rest of the cases of the transition function for C. And uh, now to, to encode the whole game flow, we need to use the composition described in the preliminary section. So um, we'll need a constraint composition because we need to set two, two global constraints. The first one uh, refers to init transition and uh, models the consistency property. 
Um, this is meant to ensure that any transitions are done only on configurations which are accordingly to the problems, to the assumptions in the problem statement. Uh, that is, there must be at least one money child and uh, a child sees all the other money children, except for the children themselves. And the second um, global constraint we need to set refers to the recipient and uh, corresponds to a no equivocation constraint. We need to ensure that uh, the received messages are uh, correspond either to the current state of J or they are a message from the past, but from a state in which J didn't know their status. Um, the invariant maintained by this solution is uh, the same as in the classical version. The only change is the fact that uh, we, we've included the newly added row component. It's very important to remark that this uh, example illustrates uh, two um, essential properties we are interested in when reasoning about quality distributed systems by Mr. TLSMs. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, this example is not uh, quality, but uh, as a future work, we are going to um, look at uh, equivocation also in this context. So for the moment, we have uh, safety, which translates to the fact that all children decide on a status consistent with the initial configuration, and liveness, which ensures that uh, each child eventually decides on a status. Um, this theorem gives evidence of uh, liveness and safety properties um, in the protocol. Um, the theorem claims that from any initial consistent state, there is a valid trace to a final state consistent with the initial configuration. And um, I sketch here the proof of this. Um, first, uh, so we need three main intermediary results to prove it. Uh, the first one is progress, which um, ensures that from any composite state, um, there is a valid transition to another composite state in which at least one component has greater round than, than before the transition. Uh, we also use the fact that uh, the invariant uh, mentioned holds. And uh, the last one is the termination, which um, claims that no child can increase their round number uh, past the number of money children seen by them. Um, so uh, analyzing the dynamics of the proposed solution, we notice that the only relevant exchange of messages happens in the final stages of the protocol. So we come up with an optimization of the initialization step. Instead of um, making uh, each step um, um, and reaching this state, we replace the init label with a jump one and um, and transition directly to a state where the round number is uh, uh, the, the number of uh, Madi children minus one. <laughs> and uh, now uh, one can, can find a very short path to a solution uh, which uh, follows these two steps. A child can send a message with status unknown Another Madi child receives it and discovers their Madi, sends itself a message with this discovery, and after that, all the other children can infer their status. Um, yes, and uh, also um, the described solution seems to satisfy our initial guidelines for a good asynchronous approach. Uh, it's still far from being perfect uh, because we've uh, identified uh, so-called uh, information leak, which um, is given by the fact that uh, revealing the round number as part of the messages exchange alters the communication more than expected 
in terms of what becomes inferable. So uh, we've uh, built an example uh, in which uh, in which children can uh, find out their statuses even if they haven't taken part in the conversation so far. So this is not in sync with the original the, of how the flow of the solution should work. So this is why we've uh, designed the second model. With Thank you. 